And it is well known that after volcanic eruptions, the sunsets and the sunrises are truly fantastic. It's also the moon that is red when it comes up. And even the stars and the planets, you may never have noticed it because it's not an overwhelming thing. It is the sun that is the overwhelming thing that makes the entire sky red. And so, I have decided that I'm going to create in 26100 a blue sky for you and a red sunset, killing two birds with one stone. <laughs> and for the physicist in my audience, I'm going to kill three birds with one stone. <laughs> but the third bird comes a little later. I have here a bucket which is filled with sodium thiosulfate in this bucket. And when I turn the light on, you will not even see any light from that bucket. Nothing is scattered in your direction. I think of that as being the sun, by the way. Now I'm going to add a little bit of sulfuric acid. And when I do that, very small sulfur particles, smaller than a tenth of a micron, will precipitate will in that solution. Radi scattering. And so the light that will come to you is blue. And you will see blue light, just like with the smoke. But now, as time goes on, we will get more and more and more and more of those 0.1 micron particles. And so the light that comes out here has no blue in it anymore. It doesn't have any green in it anymore. It's all scattered in your direction, just like here with the sunset. So what color do you think the sun is going to get? It's going to be red. That's why I said I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. So I will add the sulfuric acid. The difficulty with this experiment is always, if you put too much sulfuric acid in it, the whole process goes too fast. And if you put too little in it, then you will become impatient. At least <laughs> MIT students would. <laughs> so I'm going to put this in and stir, and then make it immediately dark. And I want you to look at the sky, which is here is the sky. If you sit all the way there, you don't see it so well. But look, how much did you pay for this? These people have a better view. <laughs> <laughs> so just keep looking. For me, it's already beginning to turn a little bluish. We'll just give it a little bit more time. The sun looks just white, light, as it was before. I always have a backup, you see. If this takes too long, then what I do, I add another teeny weeny little bit of sulfuric acid. To speed up the process a little. I see blue light, and when I look at the sun, it looks a little reddish already. For the physicist among you, light that scatters over an angle of 90 degrees, this light that scatters in this direction, the people who pay the most tonight, who are sitting right here, <laughs> the light is also linearly polarized. That was also the case with the, rogue, with the smoke experiment, but I didn't mention that. But for those of you who are sitting here, I can show you with my polarimeter, when I rotate my polarimeter, that I can the blue sky completely dark and I can the blue sky completely bright again. The people who are sitting there, the angle of scattering is not 90 degrees. So they won't see it so well. But you people see it very well, don't you? 100% polarized. Look at that sun. 
let's face it, isn't this incredibly romantic? <laughs> In 26100, the center of MIT, you are seeing in the lecture hall a red sunset. And in fact, the sun is so red now that I think the sunset <laughs> is very close. I have given, in this lecture hall, about 800 lectures. And it is wonderful to be back here. But it really hurts to know that this is my last lecture in 26100. I have therefore decided that I want to leave you in style. And the way I will do that is to leave 26100 in my own private rocket. Thank you. Thank you.